Okay, welcome back. Uh, last time we did the um, data memory. Yeah, remember the data memory? Well, what I want to do this time is um, do a test bench file for that and do some simulation to kind of verify that, yeah, it'll read and write. So what do we do? Source or project, new source. And what do I want? I want TB data memory, memory, TB data memory, and I want that to be a test bench file. Okay. When you select test bench, you go to next, and it says, oh, I got a whole bunch of things you could test bench on. Well, what do I want? I want data memory. So I select data memory. Next, finish, and let's see. There you go. All right, so it stubs me out a test bench file. Let's get rid of all the comments. Comments are good to have. I just don't do them because I don't have that kind of real estate available when I uh, when I do the uh, videos. All right, now you know we could do this declaration, and um, but I, I don't like do using the 87 format. I like using the the 93 format. And we're going to take out the clocks because there's no clocks being used here. And yeah, here's where it instantiates it right here. This is the instantiation, but it uses 87 format to convert that to 93. We just do entity work dot and then I have to put the behavior in here. Well, what's the what's the um, uh, the architecture of this guy? Well, let's see. Go back over here, and you see. Well, it's behavioral. That's what's um, in the uh, um, the architecture. That's the word we want right there. So if we go back, we just put that thing into there, and then um, I can uh, have the rest of the state port map. There you go. So yeah, we're good. So that's how you instantiate it according to 93. All right. And um, these are the variables of the component, and these are the local variables. And of course, what do I always like to do here? Let's do that. Be consistent here. I like to specify these with TB because when you're starting out, it's always neat to know just by looking which variables are part of the component and which variables are part of the local VHDL file. And you don't typically do this, but I, I'm doing it simply because I'm in the education business, and it, it, it seems to eliminate the uh, confusion that a lot of first-time VHDLers uh, get. Now, we're not using a clock, so let's delete that. We do have our stimulus process, and um, what do I always do down here? I use that assert false trick, right? Now, there's a lot of assert falses, and you can report something that basically gets written out somewhere. I should show you that. And then um, severity. Well, there's all kinds of severity levels. There's like, I think there's like four or five of them. And this one causes the simulation to end, and the idea is that I can end right when I'm done testing what I want to test. Okay, so I kind of like that little trick. All right, so at this point, um, we have a test bench file. Um, it uh, takes the variables that are part of the inputs and outputs, copies them over here, and then we instantiate it, and then we have our process. Well, well how do we want to test this guy? Well, let's, um, let's write a memory location. Let's actually write two of them. And so I'm going to copy and paste that code into there. Let's uh, copy it right in here after begin. Okay. So what I've done is I've put in this block of code right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set up an address. Okay. So I'm going to say address is 1001 quad 0. Okay. And the data that I want to write there is quad 1, quad 2. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is make sure mem write is 0. I am going to wait 10 nanoseconds. I'm going to pulse it to a 1. I'm going to wait 10 nanoseconds while it's asserted. And then I'm going to pulse it back, bring it back to a 0. All right. And let's see. Oops. Oh, no, that's me doing some screwy stuff here. Get rid of that. I'll talk about that later. And there you go. So this block of code has, should have just written quad 1, quad 2 to memory location 1001, quad 0. Okay. Now, Let's do the same thing. Okay, let's read another location. Let's change our data address to 1001.0004 and change our write data to quad 3, quad 4. And then once again, I will pulse mem write. Um, I set write to 0, make sure it's at 0. I wait 10 nanoseconds, then uh, I set it to write 1. Here's where I pulse it. I wait 10 nanoseconds, and then I put it back uh, to 0. And then I assert All right, to end my simulation. So yeah, we're loading up memory address loading up the data, and then we're pulsing mem right. That looks pretty good. Let's save that. Let's uh, behavioral check syntax on data memory. Uh, go to our test bench, behavioral check syntax there. Oh, we got some errors. Let's see. What are the errors? What if I can figure this guy out? Uh, let's see. What are the problems here? Oh, yeah. What did I do? Yeah. I, um, I didn't. Uh, yep. See, that's kind of the problem with doing that is I always forget to uh, I copy and paste. Yeah. These are, I changed these variable names up above, right? Remember that? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. My bad. There you go. Think at that point, it should be okay. Because these names have to match, right? The names up here. So I tend to do that, but I probably should stop doing that. Nah, who knows. All right, so let's play that game again. Behavioral check syntax on the actual component. That's good. Behavioral check syntax on the test bench file. Yeah, that's good. Make sure the test bench file is selected. Simulate behavioral model. And we should get a nice little waveform of uh, us trying to write the memory. Okay, so let's kind of do a little real estate management here, kind of get things down, and then we'll go up here, zoom to full view, and look what we've got. Okay, the first line right here is our address. I drive 1001 quad zero on it, and then at 30 nanoseconds, I change it to 101004. And then down here on the write data, when I've got an address of 1001 quad zero, my write data on this guy is one quad one quad two, and then I come along and I pulse. So at that point, I should have written 111 um, or quad 1, quad 2 to 1001. Okay, then I come along here and change the address to 101004. I change my data at this point here to quad 3, quad 4, and I pulse it. Now, we don't really see the memory being um, changed. And then notice read data. Read data is undefined because I haven't read any data from this thing. But I can actually look at the contents of this memory. Now, do you remember where that was? If we go back to our unit, UUT, um, we can bring in variables that aren't inputs or outputs, and it's called DM. That's what we called our structure. If I do add to waveform, okay, and then um, I need to uh, restart and then run all, and then I do a zoom to full view. Now, this line right here actually shows me the contents of um, memory. So if I can open that guy up, notice at this point right here, memory is all zero. Well, look, you get a transition right there, right when you pulse that mem right. And what happened? The first location went to quad one, quad two. Nice. So at this point right here, I've got quad one, quad two on the first location, quad zero, quad zero on all the others. But now I'm going to um, pulse the mem right over here and notice that my second memory location is going to change to quad three, quad four. Yeah, see what's going on? So at this point right here, now where I've got the line clicked right now, I still have quad zero, quad zero. But then I pulse that mem right, it takes the address 1001004, the data, and it writes it to the 1001 quad zero zero four location right here, which is now I've got quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four. Yeah, and we've written it. And there you go. So um, yeah, we have successfully written uh, data to our, uh, our to our memory. Nice. Let's go ahead and modify this guy and see if we can do the same thing um, uh, for a um, for a, a read. Yeah, let's just do a read here. I will copy and paste that over. So now we'll open up the code right here. And what I will do is I will paste in some read code. And now you do the same thing. You just set up the address you want to read, and you essentially pulse mem read. You set up the next address, which is 1001.004, and then you pulse read. Okay. All right, let's do that. Okay. Data memory, behavioral check syntax. TB, behavioral check syntax. Oh, let's see. I got, I got some errors here. What's going on? Oh, same old thing. My gosh, what did I do? Okay, maybe that's a sign I should stop doing this and do real VHDL. There you go. All right, so let's uh, do that again. Try this, behavioral check syntax. And come down to here, test bench. And make sure that guy's selected. And now we should both have our writing in there and our reading in there. And let's see. Let's kind of bring these things back a little bit because I don't think we need these at this point. And I'll bring this guy back a little bit. Bring this back a little bit so I can still read things. And zoom to full view. Yeah, so look what's going on here. Um, here we're doing our writing. So we're writing quad 1, quad 2 to 1001 quad 0, which we just talked about. At this point right here, we are writing um, quad 3, quad 4 to 1001 004. Now, 
at this point right here, I'm going to change the address back to 1001 quad zero, and then I'm going to pulse my um, mem read. Well, the minute I pulse mem read, what happens? Well, my read data comes out of the memory, which is quad one, quad two, and that's what I wrote back here. Then I change up my memory address. I pulse mem read again, and now my data address or my read data coming out of the memory changes from quad one, quad two to quad three, quad four. Yeah, so we basically have written um, one memory location, another memory location, and then we went back and read the first one and then read the second one by pulsing mem read and mem write. So I feel pretty good that this, uh, this circuit works, and I think I'm going to stop there. Thanks for watching.